Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and in our last video we finally got our UI hooked up so that we can now display and track our objectives using our UI. However, there's a decided lack of awesomeness in the rewards section. So in this video we're going to create rewards and also hook them up to our UI. Let's get started. Now the very first thing we're going to need to do is actually create rewards. We're going to do this inside of our quest scriptable object, so let's head there. And at the moment, similar to what we've done for our objectives, where we create a list of objectives and then use this serialized public class here, we're going to do the same thing for our rewards. So let's start off by creating a system serializable. This will be a public class called Quest Rewards. There's just going to be two elements here. The first is going to be a public item scriptable object, which we'll just call item SO. And then we'll also have a public integer for quantity. We can then come up top and make a public list of type quest rewards, and we'll just call it rewards. Let's save that as that's all we need to do here, and we can just test to make sure it's working in Unity. So now if I click on an existing quest, like my like the video quest, I now have a rewards dropdown. I'm gonna add three and open up these elements. Now here we can click on the item we'd like to get. For example, say I want to grant you a femur for completing this, and we'll do five of them. Now gold is also set up nicely as we made a scriptable object for gold. And while it behaves a little differently than other items, we can use it here. We'll set a quantity of say five. However, experience we don't actually have a scriptable object for. So let's look at gold, for example which you'll notice has this little is gold checkbox to let us know that it uses slightly different logic than the other items. We're going to do something similar for experience. So let's open our item SO script. And just like we did for gold, we'll create a public bool called is experience. Okay, with that done, I'm going to click on my gold scriptable object here, just duplicate it, and let's rename this one as experience. I'll then just fill it out, giving it a name, description, and the tiny swords asset pack doesn't have an actual image for experience. I created one using some of the assets from the pack and just messing around in Photoshop, but you can use any image you like here. We're then just gonna uncheck is gold, check is experience, and here the stack size doesn't matter as this won't actually be going in the inventory, so I'm just gonna zero it out, but really you could put anything in there. Now that we've created some experience, let's head back to our quest. And actually I want gold and experience to always appear first in the rewards list, so I'm gonna move them up. We'll then add experience in here and I'll make this one worth say 10 experience. All right, now that we've got rewards, we want to actually hook them up to our UI. So first off, let's just open up our hierarchy here, going into the quest canvas, quest details, rewards, and into reward slots. Let's click on one of these and open up the prefab. So this is a pretty simple object here with just an empty parent that holds an image as well as some text for the quantity. What we're going to do next is actually create a short script that's going to handle setting both the image and quantity whenever we have a reward. So let's create a new C sharp script or mono behavior if you're in Unity 6 and we'll call this quest reward slot. And before I have a chance to forget, I'm just going to go ahead and add this to the slot itself. All right, so once we get inside here, we're not going to need our start or update method. And this little helper script is just going to be setting the image and text. And so we're going to need those references. So let's make a public image reference called reward image. It won't like that as we need to add the namespace for using unity engine.ui. Here, let's add using TM pro. We'll then make a public text mesh pro reference, which we'll call reward quantity. All that's left now is to create the simple method that's actually going to set these. This is going to be public as our UI will need to talk to it. And it'll be a void method called display reward. It's going to need some information to do that, so it'll take in a sprite. It's also going to take in an integer for the quantity. With that done, we can go ahead and actually set our UI. So let's get our reward image and make sure that its sprite is set to the sprite for this reward. We'll then get our reward quantity and make sure that its text is equal to the quantity passed in. However, quantity is an integer and text is a string, so we need to convert it. So let's put dot to string in order to make that work. All right, that's all done. Back in prefab mode, let's just hook up the image and quantity here. That way when we leave prefab mode, we can click on our other reward slots and see that they've already populated those fields. Excellent, now we can just head into our quest log UI script and we're gonna do almost exactly what we did with our objective slots. We'll start off by just making a serialized reference to our quest reward slots. This is going to be an array and we'll call it reward slots. Then down below, we'll create a method called display rewards, and it's going to follow the exact same pattern that our display objectives did. Now, before we actually write it, let's come up top here to our handle quest clicked and just add a display rewards call so that we update both the objective and rewards each time we click. We can get rid of this for each loop here. That was just a artifact I forgot to get rid of last time. Sorry about that. 
Now inside display rewards, we're gonna do almost exactly the same pattern we did for our objectives. We'll start with a for loop that's gonna go through each of our reward slots, starting with the first one, number zero. Here, we'll use an if statement, and we're just gonna check to see if the slot we're looking at, and that'll start off as a zero, is less than the scriptable object's reward count. Now, just like last time, let's start off by doing the else statement, as that's the easiest, as if there's no reward to go on this slot, then we just wanna turn the slot off. So we'll get this reward slot and set its game object's activeness to false. We can then just copy that, because if there is a reward for this slot, then we wanna turn it on. So in order to populate the information for the reward, we first have to actually find the reward. So let's just create a generic variable here called reward, and it's just gonna be set to the quest scriptable objects reward, and here we're just gonna use the index. At this point, we can now pass that information to the slot itself. So we'll get this reward slot, starting with slot zero, tell it to display reward, that's that method we just wrote earlier, and now we can pass along the sprite and quantity. To get the sprite, we're just going to look at the reward we just found, get its item scriptable object, and then look on that item SO for the icon it's supposed to display. We'll also look at this reward's quantity and pass that number along. With that done, our quest reward slot will have the magic it needs in order to display the right image and quantity. At this point, there's just a tiny bit of setup. We'll go to our quest log. Let's lock the inspector so it stays there. We can then shift click our reward slots and drag them here into the reward slot box. Let's then just unlock it or it'll cause us mayhem later on. We can close that up to make things look pretty and let's test this out. All right, so now when I get in the game, I can in fact click on this slot and our rewards update. You can see the experience gold and femur. And when I click on one of these other ones where I haven't put a reward, it clears out the rewards altogether. All right, that's working really nicely. Our UI is a setup, we're tracking our rewards. Wouldn't it be nice if this was actually part of a video game? So in the next video, we're gonna hook up our accept and decline and make it so we can actually get some quests in game. We're headed there in the next video and I hope to see you there. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.